welcome back to my channel hi if you're new and welcome to my february reading wrap up i had an all right reading month i didn't read a lot of books but most were four or five star i like were four or 4.5 out of five star which was really really good i'm so happy so i'm not going to keep waffling i'm going to jump straight in the first book i'm convinced i read in january but according to my goodreads i read it in february um so i must have finished it right at the beginning of the month but it was Emily Wilde's Map of the Other Lands by Heather Fawcett. This is a sequel to Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. And basically, in these books, we join Emily Wilde, who is a researcher, basically, of fairies, fairy kingdoms, fairy everything. And she ends up normally with one or two people on her little research journeys with her. It's just a cosy fantasy read. It's written in the form of a diary, so we have sort of like footnotes and things like that as well. Um, I like this more than the first book, controversially. Um, I just felt there had been a lot more character development at this stage. I was more invested, I think, in, in any like fam familial and romantic relationships. And I liked it. You know, sometimes you just want that cosy book that's got a little bit of drama, but not too full on. Some of the characters were likeable, some weren't, which I love, and it was just good. I didn't see it coming, like how the ending sort of played out. Um, I like how kick-ass Emily is, and I thought it was really good. Definitely would recommend it as a cosy fantasy series. Then, and I read Hooked by Emily McIntyre. I love this so much. So this is part of the, what's this called? Um, which is the Never After novel, so I'm assuming the Never After series. <sighs> it's like a Disney villain retelling, basically. Kind of. So Hooked, obviously we, it's a Peter Pan, like, theme. But we follow James, um, whose nickname is Hook. Basically. So, you know, we're following Hook. And he is, he works sort of like underground mafia type style running the city without openly woohoo um there's murder there's drama etc but he is after wendy and i mean wendy in like a a naughty romance sexual sense um and he's after basically taking his revenge on peter michaels who does it say happens to be wendy's dad so obviously he ends up falling for Wendy. This isn't really spoiler, it's all on the back here. Um, and, but he needs to take out her dad. So you have that drama. But what I really loved was the relationship built between Wendy and James. I really liked it. You can see how much they care for each other, how frustrated they are for having these feelings towards each other, but it's trying to fight that urge to be together. But... I like them as a couple. Um, I think it worked very well. I thought it was very fast paced, really fun, lots of twists and turns in it. Um, so for me, the plot was as interesting as the romance in here, so like the, the plot at the back. It was good. Would definitely recommend. Can't wait to finish this series. Hope I love them all as much as I did this one. Then I finally read Sarah Millican's How to Be Champion. This is her autobiography. Um, I enjoyed it. It's been on my TBR for ages, so this was actually the first 100 books on my TBR. And I finally got around to reading it, so I can finally give this copy back to Mum because it's her copy and I've had it for ages. This was a solid probably 3.5 to 4 out of 5 for me. What I like though with autobiographies is if I'm familiar with a person, I end up like while I'm reading it, I'm hearing it in their voice, which was just really fun. But we join her from sort of like every age from school, her first jobs, her joining the comedy circuit, her relationships, her pets. It was just fun. It was just a very good time. It was a very easy read. And I think she's a really sweet person. So I think that helped. Then what did I read? I read Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. I was determined to finish the duology, basically. Um, and here we're back with, I've forgotten the names already. <gasps> oh no, Iris and Roman. There we go um and we just see what happens so basically i'll go back to the first book divine rivals 
where we join both of them, they're journalists fighting for this one particular position. You know there's it's like an enemies to lovers romance here, but there's also like a war going on in the background with gods. And obviously humans get involved in this war. Um, and the last book kind of ends on a bit of a cliffhanger. So in this book, it's, it's the resolution basically. It was okay. A lot of people love this series. For me, yes, I preferred this to Divine Rivals but it was still about 3.5 to 4 out of 5. It wasn't wow. There were like, there were bits that I really, really loved and there were bits that were just okay. So I like the couple. I think they work very well together, but it just didn't do it for me, but it was fine. It was a fine read. Do you know what I mean? It was okay. I didn't hate my reading experience. Then what did I read? I read Tales from the Cafe. This is the sequel to Before the Coffee Gets Cold, where we go to this cafe if you sit in a particular seat you can drink a coffee go back in time or go forward in time and you've got to be back before the coffee gets cold so you can see people from the past or your future and there's certain rules to follow but basically they're, they're like it's almost four short stories all centered around for like three or four people that are going to and from past present um, and they're always quite emotional reads so in this one it's, it's a bit awkward I've started the next one. Yeah, you've got a married couple, you've got lovers, you've got best friends, you've got a mother and son. And it's a sweet, easy read. They're only The book's normally a couple hundred pages and it's a quick read. A bit emotional. I am going to keep this, although I didn't love it. It was For me, it's just a three out of five star because I can see me recommending this to people because I know a lot of people will love this book. For me, it was just, it was fine. It was okay. Then I read... Feybound by audiobook and this is Sarah Sarah Al Arifi. Now this was a five star anticipate for me. Fay Sapphic thought it was gonna be an amazing time. It was fine. In the end I gave it a four out of five star, but that was basically for the last hour or two. The rest was just as like a solid three star. I felt the book was quite long and perhaps I would have enjoyed it if maybe it was a little bit shorter felt bits were really quite dragged on but I did like the different relationships in it I liked the whole battles that were going on the creatures that were involved um I don't want to give you too many spoilers here so it's a bit awkward but there's a connection with a particular creature that's quite funny like they hear each other's thoughts and things like that they can communicate like that um I like that. I, I particularly like one of the relationships in the book. The other one kind of, I was like, yeah, it's all right. So I don't know. I don't feel I really connected to the characters. And I think if I did, and I'm not too sure what stopped that, I think if I did, I might have loved it a little bit more. But it was fine. It's fine. Because then I read The Mystery Guest by Nita Prose. Now this is the sequel to The Maid. This is part of Molly the Maid series. Basically, Molly um, is a maid in a hotel, and in the first book, there's a murder, and of course, everyone blames the maid. So in this one, how much does it tell you in the blurb? Right, a mystery writer drops dead in the hotel, and it turns out that actually Molly has had something to do with this writer in the past. And maybe they're not all they seem to be. And we flit in this one between Molly's childhood and present day, sort of the investigation. And I like that element. I really did. I liked seeing Molly as a child. And I quite liked the current murder situ. I think that was actually very well written. Really enjoyed it. Um, and again, this is one of the books I loved it more than the first book, which is great. This is just a cosy mystery. It's not too intense and fast paced it's just a chilled read um but yeah definitely i i love this i binged this in about because initially i had to return it to the library because someone re like requested it and then when i finally finished it they like got another copy but i binged this in like 48 hours and i'm so pleased that i did because and i think even if i hadn't got that library return looming over me i still would have binged it because it was just so intense it's one of those books you know when you pick it up and you're just so involved in the story 
the you you just you're reading a hundred pages before you even realize what you're doing and it was his book it was also oh my goodness the fury by alex mike Eiders. this was bloody good it really was and i can't decide this is a four a 4.5 or a five out of five because I actually genuinely still think about this book. Before I'd finished this book, I was 50%. I went out and bought a copy for my mum. And I was like, as long as this ends as good as the first half of the book is, you're going to really like this. Um, basically, we joined seven people, isn't it? Seven of us trapped on the island. One of us was a murderer. And basically, one of the people on the island is the narrator. And they explain the backstory behind all the characters, why they do or don't like each other, who loves who. Um, I don't want to give you any spoilers, but basically most of the characters are in the theatre world. They're like actresses or writers and then their partners and then the people that work on the island. And you sort of see what you initially think is this lovely like friendship group to, oh my goodness, they're absolutely like... There's drama here. There's serious drama here. This was so fast paced. I love this. This absolutely just captured me. It was, I got so invested in this book and I love this so much. And thrillers, they are 50-50 for me. I will love it or I will hate it. So, I mean, I'd already read The Silent Patient by this author and it was okay. I found that very predictable. So it was still good, but I kind of like, well, that's obviously going to be what happens. Did not see any of this coming and I was just gripped so I would definitely recommend picking this up definitely then in the car on the way to and from London for a job um, my partner and I listened to Douglas Bradley's Spine Chillers volume one because uh, he wanted to listen to something ghosty and scary and that was just it was about a three or four hour long audio book but it was old school ghost stories so there was like one by Charles Dickens one by Edgar Allan Poe they were just I don't know, there were some really good ones in it, actually. It was about half a dozen stories. Some were good, some were okay. Um, but that might be a feature of our trips to London now, which was it's quite a nice little thing to start. Then, from NetGalley, and I read this on my Kindle, I read The Ouija Man by N.P. Cuniff. I love that. It was a short book. It was so short, but it was brilliant. And we joined this writer who's gone back to their hometown, basically, in Ireland, because they're suffering from writer's block and their publisher, publisher's just like, just go away, clear your head, ditch your phone and just breathe and just hope to get some inspiration. I need another book from you. But then he goes back, he checks into this place, this like little cottage by this black lake, which is quite dark and eerie. And he goes to the pub one night and they get out the Ouija board, the spirit board. And after that, Oh my goodness, he's seeing things, hearing things, people are dying. It is utter chaos. And we read the book based on his diary um, of his experience, like staying in the house and what happens. And then we have emails from his publisher saying, you know, um, I'm visiting the author now, or and I've got their manuscript and they want me to take these bits out. I'm not going to take these bits out. Um, is mystery here. And just when you think it's basically finishing, it doesn't. There's like a like a really cool sort of curveball thrown. And it was just really good. It was really good. It wasn't scary, but it had that thriller intensity. And yeah, I'd recommend that. I definitely, definitely would. Um, and I'd definitely pick up anything else by the author. Then I read, and I listened to this by audiobook, um, but I had this like copy from library just in case. This is a complete fairy stories of Oscar Wilde. And it was just a bunch of fairy stories. Some were good, some weren't so good. Um, some were a bit uncomfortable to read. It's kind of based on the time they were written. But you know what? It was an easy read. I, I listened to this on audiobook while I worked from home one day and it was fine, it was fine. And the only other book that I'm in the middle of now that I think there is a chance that I'm going to finish by the end of this month is The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. And that's because I've been binging this. I've only got about an hour left according to my Kindle. So I imagine I'll try and finish it tonight. But it was so good. It's so, so good so far. Um, and we joined some teenagers that have all got some special gifts. And they've been recruited by the FBI to help solve cold cases. 
So you've got one that's amazing at reading someone's emotions, one that can recall all sorts of facts and figures, one that can tell if someone's lying or not, and one that's really good at like profiling. And you know what? It's just caught me. It's just, I, I knew there was a lot of hype about this series and I thought, oh, I'll just give it a go. And I can, so far I can understand why. So I like the characters. I like the storyline. I think it's going to get quite interesting. But that is my wrap up for February. Hope you enjoyed it. If you've read any of those books, let me know what you thought of them. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.